Okay, I think uh, now's a good time to get started. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us in the world. Uh, welcome to the Mechie Alliance seminar series. Uh, my name is Brian Anthony. I'll really be your, your host and question facilitator. Um, our, our guest of honor today is Dr. Fang So Shia um, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at MIT, where he did his, his both his master's and his PhD. And today he'll be sharing his work on atomic forest microscopy, uh, in particular, high speed atomic forest microscopy. So versatile, high speed and, and large range atomic forest microscope design for advanced imaging. Uh, thanks, so thank you for your time today. Uh, participants, uh, please uh, um, ask questions via the chat and we'll hold those to the end. Um, thanks, so uh, Dr. Shia, I, I turn it over to you and uh, look forward to your words today. Thank you, Brian, for the introduction. Uh, I'll begin to share my screen now. Just one second. Making sure I'm sharing my sound well. OK. All right. Can you see my screen now? Very good. Looks, looks coming through awesome. loud and clear. Cool. I'll just go ahead and start. Uh, it's an honor to share my research work here. And welcome to my presentation. So I'm currently a postdoc researcher in the Mechatronics Research Lab. Today, I'll be talking about the versatile high-speed and large-range atomic force microscope design for advanced imaging. Uh, this is my PhD work, supervised by Professor Kamal Yusuf Toomey. Microscopy instrument development are important to enable new imaging capabilities for nanoscale phenomena. What you are seeing on the screen now is the real-time video of calcite etching process visualized using the atomic force microscope developed in our group. So we can see the deepening of pits on the surface as the calcite material being etched away by sulfuric acid. With high-speed imaging, dynamic processes can be visualized to improve the fundamental understanding of microscopic interactions. As another example, the topography image of a calibration grating is taken in opaque crude oil, which is impossible for conventional AFM systems with optical deflection sensing principle. So this allows the observation of many samples in their native environments that can be opaque. So in this presentation, I'll explain how these two capabilities are enabled through custom instrumentation development. Hello, I am Dr. X, a scientist working on nanotechnology research. Recently I have some naughty atomic babies taking my freshly made atomic cheese. I hired my friend Mr. Clever to keep an eye on them. While Mr. Clever has years of experience looking after atomic babies since 1986, he is overwhelmed by this task. First, atomic babies are too fast to track. It is hard to identify which naughty baby took the cheese. Second, Mr. Clever can't do a good job if his eyes are blocked. He is also allergic to certain chemicals. Third, we need to take care of Mr. Clever and make him happy or we might risk breaking something important. Last but not least, Mr. Clever works with high-end friends all the time. Hiring him is quite expensive. To protect my atomic cheese, I used my precision instrumentation expertise to help improve Mr. Clever's capabilities. Want to know how I did it? Let me show you through this presentation. All right, uh, as you may have guessed from the video, uh, Mr. Clever is the cantilever probe, which is the key component of atomic force microscopes. Corresponding to the video in this work, we addressed the four main challenges faced by nanotechnology researchers using AFM for imaging. First, we developed a high-speed and a large-range imaging system for dynamic process visualization. Second, we enabled AFM imaging in chemically harsh opaque environments native to many samples. Third, we increased the level of system automation for both AFM experiment preparation, imaging, and analysis to reduce operational overhead. Fourth, using our expertise in precision instrumentation, we also developed a low-cost modular AFM system for education. These developments can be useful in a variety of applications with selected examples visualized in the middle. These capabilities are enabled by subsystem development uh, with the rainbow color code. They include the positioner, cantilever pro, controller, driver electronics, optics, and vision, software implementation, as well as system integration. These subsystem elements correspond to the main contributions of this work. 
Uh, this is the expanded view of the new development of the subsystems. We will be focusing on the positioner, cantilever, controller, and system integration in this presentation. I think there's a total of seven of them. The first one is the high-speed, large-range, or low-cost AFM micro nano positioner design. This is the key to enable high-speed and large-range imaging. The second one is the coated active cantilever probes for harsh opaque liquid operation. This is the key to enable the harsh opaque liquid imaging. The third one is algorithms for second control, automatic tuning, and AFM imaging. This is important to ensure good imaging performance and increasing the level of automation for the AFM system. Uh, the last one we'll be focusing on will be the AFM system integration for realization to explain how we put this thing together uh, to enable the capability as you've seen at the beginning of this presentation. Okay. This slide shows the simplified CAD designs of the three AFM systems developing this work to give you a first impression on these systems. Uh, this includes the low-cost education AFM on the left, uh, the multi-layer stacked scanner AFM in the middle, and the versatile sample scan AFM on the right. We'll come back to them later in this presentation. We we'll begin with a brief overview of atomic force microscopes for audience who are not very familiar with this instrument. AFM is a nanoscale topography imaging tool for surface characterization. In its basic form, it creates 3D high topography image of sample surface with sub nanometer resolution. The key components of an AFM include a cantilever probe, a nano positioning system with a coarse engagement part and a high resolution scanner, and an imaging control system. An AFM scans the micro cantilever over the sample surface, measure various quantities from the probe sample interaction, but only limited to topography. The deflection is regulated by the control system to avoid damaging the sample or the probe. To conduct an AFM experiment, there are primarily five steps involved. First, sample preparation. The sample to be characterized is fabricated and shaped to fit into the instrument. Second, equipment calibration. This step ensures a good imaging performance and is typically carried out by the vendor. Third, experiment setup. Depending on the AFM principle, laser alignment and probe sample engagement is needed in most designs. Fourth, imaging and the controller tuning. The AFM user adjusts parameters during imaging to ensure good tracking performance. Fifth, imaging post-processing. The collected data are post-processed for visualization and result interpretation. Depending on the state of the cantilever, the basic mode of operation can be divided into three categories. First, contact modes. The probe tip and the sample remain in contact with the cantilever deflection regulated by the controller during scanning. Second, dynamic modes. The resonance mode of the cantilever is excited using external actuators with the probe oscillation characteristics being regulated by the controller, such as amplitude, phase, and sometimes frequency. Third, jumping modes. The probe tip and the sample makes intermittent contact so that deflection regulation is not needed between two contact points. This mode is suitable to quickly cover a large imaging area at a relatively low spatial resolution. Now that we have a general understanding of the AFM principle and operation basics, we proceed to discuss the subsystem development in this work to enable the new AFM capabilities. We start with AFM positioner design, which is the key to enable high speed and large range imaging. You will notice a label on the top right here, the corner, uh, that is the guide to keep track of the subsystem being discussed. Uh, this is a high-level summary slide for the evolution of five nanopositioners designed for imaging in this work. The first two designs are the shear piezo-based scanner and the dual actuated medial wire scanner using an overview and zoom strategy. The next two designs aim to realize high-speed imaging at a relatively larger scan area instead of the overview and zoom. Examples are the multi-flex shortcoupled scanner and the multi-layer stack scanner. This is realized by properly constraining the piezo actuators with flexure structures. The last design is a buzzer-based scanner, uh, which is low cost and safe to operate with a relatively low voltage. This design is used for the ejection AFM system. We will focus our discussion on red colored scanners as they are used in the AFM system for new capabilities. 
also we will briefly discuss the buzzer based scanner. AFM nano positional designs are the key to enable video read imaging. The fundamental limitation in the scanner design is the so called range and bandwidth trade off. To realize a large scan range, lower stiffness and longer actuators, and therefore larger mass are needed. However, to achieve high bandwidth, higher stiffness, and smaller mass are required. This becomes a fundamental trade off in scanner design. The figure down here is the log log plot and the curve fit of a bandwidth versus range for a number of scanners designed previously from literature review. To overcome this challenge for AFM imaging positioner, two positions can be, or two approaches can be taken. The first overview and zoom method aims to go around the problem using multi-actuation. The second approach is to properly constrain the piezo actuators to ensure that the unwanted resonance modes are not excited. The view actually music wire scanner uses music wires and ball bearings to constrain a center stage in the out of, Z, out of plane Z direction and two actuators to push the center stage from two directions to minimize drift from the thermal expansion in the X direction. A simple second order system model can be used to capture the linear dynamics of the system. We use binary stochastic system identification to study the linear dynamics, which enabled in this case, a 10 kilohertz in-plane scanner bandwidth and over 100 kilohertz out of plane scan bandwidth. This scanner is stacked on another commercial large range 100 micron scanner for this overview and zoom imaging. It is used in the versatile sample scan AFM. The second multi-layer stack scanner design aims to shift the lowest resonance frequency from its first mode of bending into this axial direction mode. So with a large scan range over 20 microns, a long piezo is needed. However, the bending mode dominates in this case for such slender piezo actuator. The trick is to use multiple smaller piezo actuators with proper flexure constraints as shown in the here for a 10 layer assembly uh, in the image. A long parameter model can be created for the 10 layer stack design for analysis and simulation. The stiffness for this flexure can be estimated with solid mechanics formula. The flexures are fabricated using the electrical discharge machining process. With the multiple actuators in the stack structure, 10 frequency sweeps are conducted for individual actuator excitation. An interesting phenomenon for this design is that the free end actuator has both a higher bandwidth and a larger range as it is carries the least mass and bends only one flexor constraint. The lowest resonance mode at the fixed end piezo actuator observed is beyond 20 kilohertz. We'll make use of this phenomena for a specialized controller design later in the presentation. Now let's take a look at the operational principle of conventional AFM positioning system. So a coarse positioner with stepper motor is usually used for probe sample engagement and piezo tube scanners with four quadrants are usually used for scanning image information below 10 lines per second typically. So the out of plane Z direction motion can be realized by common mode drive, meaning putting similar voltage to all four quadrants. When differential voltage is applied, a tilt of the sample can be created that causes a motion in the in-plane direction since the motion is on the order of microns where the dimension of the scanner is on the order of centimeters. The tilt angle is very small and can be compensated easily. This design is simple to, and cheaper to implement and therefore widely used. However, due to the bulk size and the coupled motion, it is very difficult to improve the bandwidth of individual access as our custom designed before. Nevertheless, this configuration can be helpful for the low-cost buzzer-based scanner design. The buzzer accurate scanner is designed with low-cost and safe to operate characteristics. Piezo buzzers have a three-layer structure for an electrode, a layer of piezo ceramic material, and the metal plate. The motion created by contraction and expansion of piezo material is amplified by a metal plate. They are most usually in speaker applications that require relatively low voltage and current. Similar to the principle of a piezo tube scanner, we can either cut the electro layer of a larger piezo into four quadrants or use four smaller size buzzers as shown in the figure. The middle layer large piezo offers smaller in-plane motion but large out-of-plane motion range, where the bottom four smaller buzzers configuration provides larger in-plane motion and a smaller out-of-plane range. We combine these two designs to improve 
provide a more flexible rent and a solution trade-off. A 16 micron scan rent and a 75 hertz is realized for this design, even with this 3D printed structure. The cost of each buzzer is around like $1, which makes them an ideal choice for engineering education. Now that we have seen the scanner design, let's take a look uh, at the cantilever probes. Conventional AFM systems use passive cantilever probes produced with nanofabrication techniques. The probe is composed of a base support chip, a cantilever B, and the probe tip. Multiple cantilevers can and various tip geometry can be produced for different applications. To measure the cantilever deflection, the optical beam deflection system is typically used. A laser is shined on the back of the reflective coating surface of the cantilever, and it's reflected and picked up by the photodiode. This allows nanoscale resolution measurement of the cantilever deflection. However, a transparent path for the laser to go through is required in this case. For dynamic mode operation where resonance excitation is needed, piezo actuators are placed in the cantilever probe holder to acoustically excite the cantilever resonance. As is evident from the driving principles, the stellar cantilever deflection cannot be controlled accurately in this case. A different driving principle is needed to operate in the opaque liquid environment. In our case, we use a piezo-resistive bimorph active probe, where sensing and actuation elements are embedded using nanofabrication techniques, making this probe active. As shown in the schematic diagram, four piezo resistive sensing elements in a wisdom bridge configuration is placed at the top surface of the cantilever, fixed and where internal stress from beam bending is maximized. This allows the embedded measurement of cantilever deflection without transparency requirement. To control the cantilever deflection, a bimorph layer with silicon and silicon nitride is heated using this aluminum wiring in a serpentine shape for thermal mechanical actuation. This design, both resonance excitation and the static deflection of the cantilever can be controlled individually. These capabilities make the design an ideal choice for a variety of applications, including the opaque liquid environment imaging. The cantilevers are produced using the fabrication processes with a high level illustration shown in the left image. The silicon and silicon nitride bimorph structure formed with deposition. The piezo resistors are formed by p-dope silicon material. Aluminum heating wires are defined with conventional photolithography. The fabricated active probe is attached to a micro SD card shaped printed circuit board with lead wire bonding for, easy, for ease of manual handling as shown in the optical microscope image on the right. To enable harsh liquid, opaque liquid living wire imaging, the cantilever active components need to be protected with coating. On the other hand, the property of the cantilever should not be changed significantly so that imaging capability can be maintained. With the delicate nature of the nanofabricated cantilever, we tried various material and coating processes. We found that the dip coating with so-called positive 20 photoresist offers a good balance performance between probe protection and imaging. We can see a comparison image of the active probe from, from at the back surfaces before and after coating. From system identification, we also see a resonance peak with reduced quality factor, but it's preserved that can be used for imaging. The coated probe is used to capture the grating image in the crude oil as shown at the beginning of this presentation. There exists a number of other sensing and actuation methods for AFM micro cantilever using various physical principles. This table summarizes the available ones in literature review based on function, signal type, size, and location, as well as the main limitation. For example, the active probe for piezo resistive sensing as well as thermal mechanical actuation are both embedded methods but are subject to temperature sensitivity. These methods can be chosen depending on application needs. In summary, the development of cantilever probes and supporting systems enabled AFM imaging capability in chemically harsh opaque liquid environments. Now let's take a look at the general framework of our controller, uh, which is the third key aspect we will be focusing on today. So the slide shows an overall framework of the color-coded AFM control system with automation and additional algorithms developed in this work. The fundamental level control is the piezo actuator scanner as labeled in black. The overall AFM dynamics for image information is relatively complicated, but we can approximately model them of the AFM system and the sample dynamics as labeled in red. Based on this model, we have also developed 
algorithms for automatic PID relay based tuning and in plane scan speed tuning. Three image level improved algorithm for topography feed forward, error correct image generation, and location based sampling for unsteady speed scanning are investigated. We also developed an adaptive single neuron PID controller to handle cases where significant sample material property variation is expected. Due to the time limitation, uh, we will just be discussing the PO2 actuator scanner controllers uh, for selected work. This is a summary of in plane motion controllers that have been investigated in this work. Some controllers are generally applicable, where some are used specifically for the multi layer stack scanner due to its specialized bandwidth characteristics. They all have their relative advantage and disadvantages. We will focus our attention on the retardive controller and the bandwidth-based repetitive controller development in this work. So retardive controllers are good for handling continu continuous periodic signals, especially sinusoidal waveforms, commonly used in high-speed AFM scanning. The bandwidth-based repetitive controller is a variation that is designed specifically for the multi-layer stack scanner using its specialized bandwidth characteristics. The basic repetitive controller uses the internal model principle, which indicates that the tracking error can be asymptotically eliminated if the controller contains a differential equation representation of the reference input signal. For a cosine omega p waveform used for in plane scanning, the Laplace transformation is s over s squared plus omega squared. For feedback control, we use a proportional term with the internal model in series with the lead compensator. And the tracking performance for the music wire dual actually scanner for 10 kHz is shown in the drawing. Compared to the orange open loop tracking, the red closed loop response follows the blue reference curve closely with slightly delay caused by the digital sampling system. Now that we understand the basics of the repetitive controller working principle, let's take a look at the specialized bandwidth based repetitive controller for the multi layer stack scanner. The key idea in the bandwidth-based repetitive controller is to make use of the different bandwidths and range characteristics of the multi-layer stack scanner to track different frequency components in the reference input signal. This is realized by using the repetitive controller structure and low-pass filter the controller output signal to drive the actuators with corresponding bandwidth capabilities. In the controller architecture diagram, the 10 actuators are divided into three groups number of repetitive controller terms to add it depend on the number of discrete frequency components in the input signal. By using the top layer actuators, 70 kilohertz sine wave can be tracked with a reduced range at 8.4 micron. Tracking of 12 micron range, 20 kilohertz triangular waveform for the first five terms is also realized with very good tracking performance. As mentioned on the controller framework summary page, We've also developed many other algorithms with automatic controller parameter tuning to reduce operator experiment overhead during the imaging. So we'll now take a look at the software interface that's implementing these controllers. The overall software architecture of the AFM system is shown in this diagram. The main image software is implemented using LabVIEW on a national instrument PXIE hardware platform. The real-time software uses an event-driven state machine architecture to handle high-level user interactions and manage imaging state transitions, including idle, engaging, engage, scanning, and retract with an additional calibration state. The FGA system uses five parallel loops to handle low-level hardware interfaces. The pre-experiment software in orange for probably the alignment is implemented using Python and OpenCV library and the green post experiment software for image batch processing and implemented in both MATLAB as well as Python with interface to Gridian. So let's take a look at AFM imaging software in operation with our video. In this video, we demonstrate the software functionality of the atomic force microscope setup developed in the lab. There are five software steps to begin an imaging process. First, we start the LabVIEW software by clicking on the white arrow. Second, we initialize the scanner position by click on move to start button using the preset imaging parameters. Third, we start to drive the probe and observe the amplitude output from a custom designed lock-in amplifier. Fourth, we engage the probe until the tapping amplitude reaches a threshold. Fifth. We can now begin the imaging process and watch the 2D displays for topography and deflection update. 
we can observe the optical view of the probe and sample as shown on the screen. A 3D display can also be turned on at this imaging rate for better visualization. In this video, the sample is a calibration grading with 500 nanometer depth and 8 micron measured pitch. The imaging is conducted in tapping mode with a 20 by 20 micron range at 400 by 400 pixel resolution with a line rate of 2 lines per second. Imaging data are recorded automatically for post-processing. After the image is taken, we can simply click on the stop imaging button, retract the probe and stop the software. Better visualization of the image can be obtained through post-processing in MATLAB software as shown in the animation. Thank you for watching. Okay, so the lab view interface is similar across all FM systems with the backend hardware code modified for specific platforms and hardware interfaces. Now that we have covered the subsystem elements, let's talk about integration of the AFM system together with some imaging experiments that demonstrate their capabilities. We start with the simplest design of the educational AFM system. SOLIDWORKS CAD design assembled the AFM system and imaging results of the educational AFM system is shown on this slide. While most research grade AFM systems have cost over 20,000 US dollars or even going beyond 100,000, this system has a 3,000 US dollars fixed cost and a 1,000 variable cost. Reduced cost makes an ideal suitable platform for engineering education to obtain hands-on experience. The design is centered around the buzzer-based actuated scanner, the active cantilever pro, and the national instrument MyReal data acquisition system. We have offered an instrumentation workshops during the 2020 winter break IAP area with fully registered participants. We plan to offer this as a full scale graduate classes in the future when resource permits. Now let's take a quick look through a video about the integration of subsystems for this AFM system. The educational atomic force microscope design has nine primary subsystems including a piezo buzzer actuated scanner, an active cantilever probe, a Wheatstone bridge amplifier, a signal generator and demodulator circuit, a national instrument MyRio, a stepper motor driver, a coarse positioner engagement system, a buzzer scanner driver circuit, and an optical microscope. The design is modular, low cost, easy to operate and suitable for a variety of experiments. The AFM can be used as a platform for precision instrumentation education. Uh, as the video demonstrates the mechanical subcomponents, this slide shows electrical subsystems involved in the design, including engagement system with positioner and stepper motor, active cantilever pro, demodulation electronics, buzzer based scanner, and my real controller, and also the optical microscope for vision with a host PC. The integration of the other two AFM systems are more complicated, but similar in principle to this one. The next example is the multi-layer stacked scanner AFM, which is designed for high-speed imaging at a relatively larger range. A piezo-resistive self-sensing probe with piezoacoustic actuation is used in this design with the multi-layer stacked scanner. The color-coded CAD shows the probe and sample interface in blue. The full scanner assembly and the course engagement systems are shown in brown. Close-up view of the scanner and probe assembly are shown on the right. We tested the high-speed imaging at large ranges by imaging calibration gratings over 8 micron by 8 micron at 400 by 400 pixel resolution in contact mode at increasing scan speeds. The samples have 10 micron trench periods on the left and middle and 3 micron trench periods on the right. We can also have the overview and zoom approach with this system. Now let's take a look at the versatile sample scan AFM system. This system can work with both passive probes using optical beam deflection sensing and active probes using embedded positional piezo resistive sensing and the thermal mechanical bimorph actuation. It is designed with overview and zoom approach with 100 micron cube large range scan and six micron fast X axis and one micron fast Z axis. This system is used to generate the dynamic process visualization of calcite etching and harsh opaque liquid imaging shown at the beginning of the presentation. The color-coded cat in the middle indicates that the infinitely correct optical microscope in the black and optical beam deflection system in blue and a passive probe holder in brown. Capacitive sensors in green, optional, optional laser interferometer for calibration is in pink. 
The right cat shows the active cantilever probe and the driving electronics in green, and multi actuators and multi wire do actually sample scanner in black, and the stepper driven course positioner in gray. Here are the illustration of the EFM system taken from a published paper illustrating the assembled EFM system and the signal path for the custom design locking amplifier for amplitude and phase subtraction implemented on FPGA. You can also use a colored scanning electron microscope image for the active cannabis probe to demonstrate uh, this resistive heating wires. Using the coded active cantilever probe for detection of the embedded components, imaging in harsh opaque liquid can be enabled. We use this AFM system for imaging in opaque acid and the crude oil environments to verify its capability. We also conducted immersion tests in human blood sample and verified the cantilever functionality. Due to the fast solidification of the sample after anticoagulation treatment even, uh, we didn't really capture the imaging in blood, but the images for cells can be captured. This development has potential for imaging capability uh, applications in biology, chemistry, and refinery for studying samples in their native environments. With experience accumulated in developing these AFM systems, uh, we also did other experiments uh, on the next slide. So here are a summary slide of a number of chemical reaction process that have been realized previously in the mechatronics research lab using the high-speed AFM developed in our group. So here are the selected examples for etching, electrochemical deposition. Uh, they are visualized to demonstrate the capability. And this development would help to improve fundamental understanding of dynamic processes. So to summarize in this talk, the development to enable high-speed imaging for dynamic process visualization and the chemically harsh opaque liquid imaging are enabled. A low-cost education AFM design is also discussed as an additional benefit from this research work. The new capabilities are demonstrated with imaging results and the development of custom AFM system is a comprehensive process that broadly involves positioner, cantilever, controller, driver, optics and vision, software and overall system integration. The development contributes to both the AFM user community and the precision instrumentation as well as the mechatronics communities. We're continuing our work to extend the development for new imaging modalities and applications and thank you very much for your attention. In the end, I would like to express my gratitude to my mentor, Professor Kamal Yusuf Tumi, and a collaborator, Professor Ivo Rangelo, and also my colleagues, Dr. Chen Yang and Dr. Yi Wang. I want to also acknowledge the project sponsor, Symphus Americas, for their financial support. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and we are now open for questions. Thank you. Fang So, thank you very much. I send you the, the virtual and the, the physical clapping. So um, great work and, and very nice talk. I, I do want to share, um, as my, my daughter came in and she looked at, I think it was the multi-layered stack scanner. She hadn't heard your intro, mm -hmm. uh, but she said, that looks like cheese. Uh, so thank you very much for the multimedia um, sort of uh, incorporation and, and grabbing our attention in that way. Thank you. Hopefully this one is an interesting start during this all virtual season for introduction to this research work. Uh, so participants, please uh, enter your questions in the chat um, or the Q&A, uh, the Q&A preferred, uh, but you can direct them to me directly in, in the chat if you'd like. Um, but uh, let, me, let me kick off you know, just a, a question um, regarding, I guess maybe scalability. I, I'm very excited about the high speed nature of it and I'm very excited by the educational aspects I was wondering if you could say a little bit about the calibration that's required um, to, you know, and then how that relates to sort of um, the manufacturing variability associated with the, with the cantilever and, and whether there are sort of easy fixes there or that's an active research question. Oh, I see. So basically uh, what you're mentioning about is uh, like a, the ease of use, for example, for the users as well as how we can reproduce these kind of results, right? So basically for the scanner as well as the cantilever, uh, they are produced basically as hardware. So for the scanner, we, what we need to do is to actually include the system calibration process like most AFM vendors will do. Basically they allow like their technician to go on site and calibrate that. So basically uh, it is done through like a manual process. 
uh, but for the controller tuning aspect, we actually on this framework page uh, try to add the automation for this PID controller tuning into the system so that users can have an easier life using this kind of system. So this is one of the goal into our uh, work to incorporate intelligent algorithms, right? Just to improve both image performance and reduce the user knowledge requirement. So it's more reproducible. Basically the system is intelligent enough to do the tuning on its own rather than relying on the user experience to see, okay, what should my gains be? And then what can I do to make sure my tracking is better? So this is in terms of uh, this aspect. Uh, for the cantilever, it's more like a nanofabrication process. So basically uh, what we have here is uh, the cantilever probe uh, being produced uh, through this nanofabrication. Uh, we do have variability in terms of the frequency sweep. So for example, these frequency sweeps uh, for the resonance frequency peak can be different across cantilever, especially when you apply additional coatings to that for protection. Uh, but in general, this is done pretty straightforward for the user by clicking a button to say, okay, sweep and identify where my peak is and then it can be found. And for the user, you can directly uh, rely on the software to do this kind of process. And in the end, what you will be using is just, okay, identify the peak, the Q factor, and that can use uh, the frequency that identified directly for imaging uh, with a slightly lower than the peak frequency. So it's sort of like automated, not requiring too much user attention in this case. Very good, thank you for that. Yep. Um, so we have, we have some questions from the participants. Uh, let, me, let me forward the first one. Um, will the hardware connected to the educational configuration be available for classrooms? Yes, here is the design, that's our general goal. So basically we plan to make this open source. So uh, the initial development is finished. Uh, the paper is under review, we're waiting for that. Uh, but after that, we'll be releasing the entire design and uh, we'll offer the workshop for individual modules during the IAP time. So basically the individual modules we're trying to do is for example, interfacing uh, with the stepper motor for the MyReal and also the cantilever probe is actually commercially available already. Uh, so this is with our collaborator, Professor Rangelo in Germany. Uh, they sort of like uh, commercialize this cantilever technology already. So basically uh, all this hardware, uh, except for the uh, circuit design, which is we did in our in-housing lab, uh, will be commercially available, uh, but we can obviously open source the circuit design so that uh, we can put this system together uh, in the future at any university if someone is interested in replicating this material. Uh, we also plan to develop the full semester class. Uh, right now we finished the module one, which is the general introduction to instrumentation with like five lectures, which we offer as a workshop during the IAP area this year. Uh, but we'll be continuing this work and uh, hopefully finish the entire thing later uh, to put it as a pilot course at MIT first. Oh, very nice. It's a very nice case for, for motivating a lot of both mechanical, electrical, and software issues. Yeah, just um, to add so, a bit more to that. So we please. do have like uh, the AFM uh, for sort of like uh, macroscopy version before and also for different kind of uh, other uh, educational purpose before. Uh, but the main thing is what we offer is we allow the AFM to be not only, uh, so for example, this is the page for uh, our literature review for educational AFM systems for pricing as well as their different purposes, uh, primarily used for demonstration of image capability. But the focus of our development is to let people uh, actually work on the subsystem. And by the end, the students should be confident saying that okay, I can develop or put together a complex system uh, for the precision instrumentation perspective uh, in the end. So this is like the general difference between existing system and what we are doing here. Very good, uh, thank you. Uh, so another, another question, and this is maybe a, a big picture question in terms of the field, but what do you think are the limitations of a system in terms of accuracy, repeatability, and speed? Um, and then where is the boundary for AFM systems currently and how movable is that boundary, do you feel? Okay, so basically uh, for an imaging scenario, this kind of uh, parameters are like always a trade-off. For example, uh, there is the pixel resolution, like meaning how many lines you are scanning for each image and how many pixels you are collecting. And there is also this uh, imaging sort of frame rate that's the overall goal that people want to push if they're doing dynamics. And also if there is the resolution limit, meaning for example, how do you want to see uh, the actual like uh, size of your feature, right? So for AFM, uh, the atomic resolution can be realized at a relatively lower speed in, for example, vacuum condition. And also this is primarily not done in this contact mode, uh, meaning if you are trying to do contact, the tip radius will always be limiting your implant resolution to be on the order of like uh, five to 10 nanometers, depending on the sharpness of the uh, probe tip. 
at all of plane is always accurate for some micro uh, for some nanometer resolution but in general if we want to push the limit uh for all aspects individually uh, it's relatively easy for example we can go to atomic resolution we can also go to the higher speed at a smaller range uh, meaning for example if we want to go for extreme speed like uh, exciting the redness at a smaller range uh, of like tens or hundreds of nanometers and we can do this imaging on the order of like a uh, hundred of frames per second so this is one direction extremely pushing the frame rate but also you can push the other end which is like uh, uh, the resolution and also in our case we are trying to do this image at slightly larger range uh, this as the trade-off states the bandwidth between range you cannot really get both simultaneously so basically we have to do this new scanner design so all these boundary portions are dedicated to applications depending on which mode you have to use and which kind of parameters do you care the most uh, so the one that i mentioned just now are like the sort of absolute limit for the limitations that we can push individually to those uh, directions. Very, very good. Thank you. So one, one last question, um, yes. and this is uh, for you. Um, if you were, you know, what, what would you like people to reach out to you for in terms of collaborating? What, what would be the most exciting thing if somebody came to you and say, hey, uh, thanks, so I'd like to do this with you. What, what, what would that be? Yeah, that was a great question. So I can answer this in two aspects. Uh, the first front is obviously the one that we mentioned a lot for the educational things. Uh, we were uh, very excited about this development and want to get this thing across like uh, to not only MIT, right, but the general community we want to expand the SPM community. Uh, people sometimes wonder why would people want to do this? Uh, the interest actually is from different front. One is from instrumentation perspective, students like in electrical, mechanical are interested in developing systems, especially nowadays nano is a hot topic as well as uh, combination with instrumentation part of it. And the other forefront is like a for like even the user side, for example, physics, material science, chemists, uh, people in those areas sometimes uh, need to have additional capabilities for their system, uh, meaning so-called uh, new imaging uh, modalities. Uh, so these are like the research level collaborations that we are looking for. Uh, actually, we are establishing new collaboration with the physics department at MIT already. So basically, uh, when I talk to like the user end to get the actual needs, I become also very excited, basically because using our expertise from an instrumentation point of view and then combine with the actual needs for frontline people doing researchers, uh, that's is an excellent scenario where we can enable new capabilities and the studies uh, for more uh, advanced applications that was a larger impact. Very, very, very good. Th thank you for the, the wonderful work and the, the, the great talk and for the engaged uh, questions. Um, so Thanks. thank you again, very good. Um, so uh, everybody, please, I, I invite you to, to come back and, and join us uh, next week, uh, same time, same channel. Uh, for our weekly seminar series. And, and it's our way to engage with the community, our, our students and faculty, our postdocs and external partners. Um, next week, we'll hear from Professor Van Rees uh, talking about high fidelity flow simulations for bio-inspired underwater devices, um, sharing a bit of, of his research. Um, and if you have recommendations, you know, whether it be yourself or your colleagues, your students, or outside collaborators that you'd like to hear from in this, in this sort of very broad forum and an opportunity to engage, do please let us know, drop us an email and, and we'll work to, with them and with you to get them scheduled. Um, so please, um, everybody stay safe and, and have a good remainder of your day. Uh, Dr. Shia, thank you again for, the, for your time and, and everybody thank you for your time. And that concludes our day. See you next week. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Enjoy thank the you. rest of your day.